Number four, Ohio State versus number three, Penn State is college football's game of the week. And today I want to take a look at things from the Ohio State sideline. And I am going to give you seven reasons why I believe that the Ohio State Buckeyes can win this football game. Ohio State is one of the best teams in all of college football. Their sole loss came to the number one Oregon Ducks by one point on the road. And there are many reasons to believe in Ohio State and the fact that they can win this football game. I've already made a preview and prediction video on Ohio State versus Penn State, and I encourage you to check that out if you haven't already via the link in the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. Spoiler alert, I did pick Penn State to win this game 34-20, to and later today I am going to be releasing a video detailing things from the Penn State sidelines and giving you some reasons why I think Penn State can win this game. I'm confident in my pick that Penn State is going to win this football game, but there are reasons to believe in Ohio State and to be confident in the Buckeyes in such a spot like this. They have won these big games before, they have not lost to Penn State since 2016, and they have a lot of good players and a lot of good coaches, and they have some matchup advantages. So let's get into all of that, but before we do, I ask a few things, and mainly I ask you to subscribe to the channel if you may, and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when I release new college football content, and also so that you can get notified when I release my video taking a look at things from the Penn State side of things, because I know whether you're a Nittany Lion or a Buckeye or a college football fan who's interested in this matchup, if you're going to be watching this video and enjoy it, you will also enjoy that video, and you'll want to get notified when it releases. Comment your thoughts down below. If you can, give me a few reasons why you think Ohio State can win this football game. There are reasons. Don't tell me there aren't any. And share this channel around to other college football fans who you know love the sport and want a new voice. Because this channel is growing. We just hit 20,000 subscribers. We're the best Big Ten football channel on YouTube. And with your help, we will become the best college football channel on YouTube. And at the end of the regular season, to celebrate crossing 20,000 subscribers, we will be doing a giveaway here. Also, join our Discord server via the link in the description or down below in the pinned comment, where we talk college football 24-7. And if you want to support the channel monetarily, the Patreon page and the merchandise store links are down below in the video description and also in the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. And you can also super comment if you want to do that via YouTube. But let's dive in. We are going to change our tradition of these videos that talk about reasons why one team can win or the other team can win in these big games. Because I typically started out with the most important reason but the channel tradition is to save the best for last, so I'm going to add that on to these videos right here. And we're going to start with the least important reason and go up to the most important reason. I think the least important reason, it's important, but it's not as important as the remaining six, is that Ryan Day owns James Franklin. Literally. He's 5-0 and versus James Franklin. He's 2-0 and in Happy Valley. He is 3-0 and in Happy Valley, if you count his time as offensive coordinator, and 7-0 and versus Penn State. If you count his time as offensive coordinator as well, he does not know what losing to Penn State is like. Maybe that could be a disadvantage. In fact, it could be, but it can also very much be an advantage because Ryan Day has played in several highly contested games with Penn State as a head coach and as an offensive coordinator. Think 2019, Penn State at one point was coming back due to a lot of forced errors and some unforced errors by Ohio State, and they pulled away. In 2021, it was a very competitive game, but Ohio State pulled away. Same with 2022. And honestly, same with 2023. And Franklin, as a head coach, is 3-17 and in against top 10 teams in top 10 matchups. And he has an even inferior record in top 5 matchups. Franklin's only, his only top, his only top 5 win came... I'm, I'm wondering if I'm thinking of this correctly. I think Penn State was ranked 7th in 2016 in the Big Ten Championship game. Wisconsin was 6th, and I believe that Michigan was 5th, or maybe Wisconsin was 5th. I don't exactly remember, but his only win against a top-5 team was Ohio State in 2016. That is Franklin's only win against a top-5 team. So it'll require Franklin to do something that he hasn't done if Penn State wants to win this football game, and that is a huge hurdle. It's more narrative than actual statistics or data in this season. So that's why I don't have it as a higher reason, but it exists. Ryan Day's a better head coach than James Franklin, in my opinion. I think most would agree with that. 
and he has an undefeated record against James Franklin, and he knows how to win in Happy Valley. Much of his roster has won and is undefeated in Happy Valley. So Ohio State is coming in here knowing that they can win this football game. Reason number six is cornerback talent. The cornerback room for Ohio State has struggled. Oregon tore it apart. Nebraska had several open receivers that Riola just couldn't hit. We saw Michigan State target this cornerback room, and that's really when the warning signs should have popped up, when we should have began to sound the alarm or at least raise a yellow flag. I downplayed it a little too much against Iowa. Well, their wide receivers didn't do too much, but they were able to do some things, and that should have also been a yellow flag. The red flags came out in full swing. It was like a sea of red flags against Oregon, and I don't think they did particularly well against Nebraska either. Burke and Igbenosan have mightily struggled. Jordan Hancock's been elite, though, and we know that Igbenosan and Denzel Burke, from their play last year and some moments they have this year, we know that they are talented. And they are going up against a Penn State wide receiver room that is good, could be great, and I say this with no disrespect to Penn State, they do not have a Jeremiah Smith. They do not have an Emeka Igbuka. They don't have a Carnell Tate. They may not even have a Nick Marsh. And they don't have a Tez Johnson. And they probably don't even have an Evan Stewart or Treshawn Holden. I'm reserving some of those with probabilities because I do think Harrison Wallace is really quite good. And obviously Tyler Warren is a tight end that Ohio State hasn't faced all season long. But these corners can be good. They have one elite player right now, Jordan Hancock, and Burke and Igbenosan could show up and play well at any moment. On the year, these three starting corners have six passes defended, four interceptions, and two forced fumbles. Two forced fumbles being, of course, from Jordan Hancock, who's been the best corner here. If they can lock down Penn State's wide receivers, or at least limit them, and maybe make a big play with a forced fumble or an impactful tackle, that could be game-changing in a matchup that is predicted by Parker Fleming and his college football analytics website to just be about a one-point Ohio State victory. Josh Pate's model's only predicting Ohio State to win by a point. ESPN's FPI says that Ohio State will win by about three points. It's expected to be a very tight game that does lean Ohio State by most metrics, but again, very tight. And Ohio State can secure a win with just one more big play on offense or defense than what Penn State produces. And the corners in the past and even at points this year, have produced those knockout punches. So we'll see, but don't give up on these corners just yet. Reason number five is safeties, the safety room. Lathan Ransom's going to play against Penn State, it sounds like, and Caleb Downs is an NFL-level safety. They have 58 total tackles on the season, a half sack, three passes defended, and two forced fumbles. Ohio State's defense has been better this year at forcing turnovers compared to last year. That is an area where their defense has actually improved. And Caleb Downs has just been electric no matter where you put him. I think that in a game like this, where you have Tyler Warren, typically a safety or a linebacker, is going to want to line up on a tight end and not a corner. And also the fact that tackling in a matchup like this with two very talented, very strong teams, tackling is going to be... Well, something that you must commit to. You can't have several big plays, but then not tackle. That's not how you're going to, that's not how you're going to win a football game. It's just not. That's something that Penn State has actually been pretty weak at in recent memory is they can generate some big plays, but when you got to tackle, it doesn't always work with the Nittany Lions. So having elite and healthy safeties, I think is a big key to winning a game like this. So you can prevent the big plays from over the top, Hopefully they can provide some help to the corners if they are struggling. They'll tackle well. Maybe they can force a big play or a turnover like we were just talking about with the corners. And this is a secondary that entering this season I thought was unanimously going to be the best secondary in college football. It's not that way at all. It, this is not the nation's best secondary. It hasn't been. But it can. It can be the nation's best secondary. And having, Le having Lathan Ransom back is going to be huge. It's absolutely going to be huge. So that's an area where I think that Ohio State has a matchup edge over Penn State is their DB room versus Penn State's wide receiver room, at least in terms of talent, in terms of schematics, and in terms of actual on-field performance. It, it's a bit shakier than that because Ohio State has not been playing up to their talent or potential at DB. 
I think Penn State's basically, uh, to put it frankly, excelled when it comes to the talent that they have and the potential they have at wide receiver, and they've they've maximized that. So Ohio State's going to need to bring their A game in pass defense no matter what, but their A game in pass defense is more than enough to win this football game. Number four is an aggressive defensive front. What we saw against Nebraska from Ohio State is a double-edged sword. On one hand, you will get more pressure. You may get more TFLs. You will also give up more big plays, especially when your secondary has struggled as much as they have, when the linebackers aren't as experienced as they were last season, and if your opponent can block downfield and get to the second level, you will allow big plays. Big plays is something that Penn State has been much better at than prior years, especially through the air. However, if the secondary, if the prior reasons that I gave are fulfilled, and Penn State has to lean a lot on their ground game, or maybe if Drew Aller especially is injured and it's Prabula starting, who doesn't have the same throwing capability that Aller does, an aggressive defensive front might be helpful. JT Tuimolau, for example, has blown up Penn State in the prior two games, but more importantly, Penn State's identity is in running the football. Penn State is one of the more run-heavy teams in the entire country, and if Ohio State can bring a high-level performance on the defensive front, get pressure, stay with their assignments, prevent big plays, well, they can really limit this Penn State offense and force them to, to do something that Andy Kolonicki doesn't want to do, which I think is go very pass-heavy. Penn State is going to want to run the football in this scheme. They're going to want to be physical. They're going to want to be creative, not just through the air, like we've seen, but also through the ground, like we have seen. You look at Penn State's rushing offense here, they are 29th in rushing attempts per game with 38.4. They are 28th in rush play percentage. They run 57.85% of the time. Ohio State only runs, by comparison, 53.08% of the time, which is 60th. Penn State is a better rushing offense than Ohio State right now, in part because they run the football more. And when it, when you look at how often they pass the football, they're 98th in pass attempts per game. So a strong defensive front that can limit Nicholas Singleton, Catron Allen, a Bo Prabula, because even if he starts or not, he will be in the offense mixed in. Aller's shown a keen ability to scramble and escape pressure. If Ohio State can really shut down this rushing offense or make Aller uncomfortable, it could be a very long day for Penn State. So whether that is getting after it with blitzes or sending four like we've seen Knowles do over the previous two seasons this year and 2023, most of the time, just an effective, aggressive game plan, whether that means blitzing, whether that means stunts, regardless, attacking up front, limiting the ground attack, and Ohio State can do that. We've seen them do that before. That could bring a victory to Ohio State in Happy Valley. Reason number three, we're getting into reasons that I think are less of a stretch. I say that because the previous three reasons six, five, and four are predicated somewhat on what ifs. What if the secondary plays its best game? What if the defensive front steps up in a way that it hasn't exactly done before? These right here are things that Penn State fans should be very concerned about, very concerned about. Reason number three, Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson. I know that with the offensive line, which is not a reason in this game, I think Ohio State's offensive line, no matter how you look at it, it's going to be handicapped if they win this game. It's going to be in spite of their offensive line, not because of it. But these two running backs are so good, they don't need an elite offensive line to wreak havoc on the ground. And they also have potency in the pass attack. On the season, they have ran for 143 attempts, 969 yards. They have 16 receptions for 99 yards and 11 total touchdowns. Quinshawn Judkins have sh has shown effectiveness as a receiver. Henderson in the past has shown effectiveness as a receiver, whether it's out of the backfield for the most part, where he can make big plays happen. And if you give any type of space to these running backs, they will take it. The problem for Ohio State's offensive line has not just been that they haven't gotten much push up front. That's actually been the case even before the Simmons injury, that they didn't always get much push. It's that they haven't been able to even open up the tiniest of holes for Travion Henderson or Quinshawn Judkins to squeeze through and get for big gains. So if the offensive line can just be a little bit better than it was against Nebraska, Ohio State could have some success on the ground. Of course, that depends on the type of defensive game plan and defensive performance that Penn State puts on. But also, 
I expect them to be a little bit more involved in the receiving game, especially if Ohio State has to pass the football more, and they may have to in this matchup. These guys are going to be nightmares for linebackers or safeties or corners or whoever's covering them to cover them. They're good enough players on their own to be non-negotiables, even with the situation on the offensive line. So pay attention to them in this game. Reason number two is Ohio State's wide receivers. I think it's obvious that they have one of the best receiver cores in the country. Specifically, Jeremiah Smith and Emeka Igbuka are some of the best receivers in the country. Carnell Tate came along against Nebraska, and he's been a little bit up and down this year by Ohio State standards. Still one of the better wide receivers, I would say, in the Big Ten. 97 receptions, 1,503 receiving yards, 16 touchdowns, and 15.5 yards per reception. They had some big plays against Nebraska through the air that gave Ohio State two of their three touchdowns. And Ohio State's offense has not exactly been outer-worldly in sustaining drives. They haven't. But they have that big play capability that can compensate for that a little bit. And they're still good, by the way, at sustaining drives. That's why their red zone efficiency is so high. They're just not perfect at it. They're not elite at it. But they're close, and you combine that with their explosive playmaking capability— where their receivers can really get open on almost anyone at any time, especially Jeremiah Smith and Emeka Igbuka, you could present Penn State some problems through the passing attack. Like I said earlier, Ohio State's offensive line is not going to be a reason why they win. I'm confident in that. I'm not certain because nothing is certain, and they have enough good players to where maybe something can happen. But a way that you can win despite your O-line is... I would say passing the football quickly and getting it, getting it, getting it out to your best receivers to maybe open up the run game a little bit. Remember, Jeremiah Smith and Emeka Igbuka have taken screens for long distance. Now that won't exactly work with a weak offensive line, but they've taken slants for distance. Will Howard can fling it. And there's also another fact about Will Howard that is reason number one on this list, and that is ultimately his ceiling. It's not exactly his base quarterback play, because his base quarterback play could be enough to beat Penn State, but it's not enough to guarantee a win over Penn State. His base quarterback play typically includes, I would say, one or two, maybe a little more bad decisions a game. And in a game that's going to be as close as this, that could be enough to assist Penn State in a win. But Will Howard, the Will Howard that I saw against Oregon, where he really made two mistakes, and if not for some of the mistakes on the defensive side of the ball, it would have been recognized as what it was, a Heisman-level performance, that type of game could help Ohio State not just win, but perhaps even win in dominant fashion if there is a path for Ohio State to win in dominant fashion. On the year, he's 134 for 181, 1,705 passing yards, 9.9 yards per attempt, 17 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, 41 carries for 91 yards, 5 rushing touchdowns. How you can help your O-line when it is not helping you is you can run. You can run with your quarterback. So that way the defense has to be a little bit more honest. They can't just crash on the running backs. They have to pay attention to the QB run. A mobile quarterback like Will Howard compared to a statue like Kyle McCord is better suited to handle constant pressure. And also the fact that he has a strong arm means that under duress, he can get the football out. He can chuck it deep. His mobility, again, will allow him to maneuver the pocket and scramble, and it will allow him to run on the outside. Something Ohio State's been good at doing is picking up three, four, five yards on like an outside QB power, and I think that Ohio State has enough of an offensive line and good enough receivers to where they could do that against Penn State and not just run up the middle or not just run maybe a little bit to the outside with the O-line, but really use that QB power to go wide on the outside toward the sidelines and just pick up a few yards there. Will Howard has been a mobile quarterback, a scrambling quarterback, a dual threat quarterback, a rushing quarterback for all of his career at Kansas State. It used to be that's what he was known for when Skylar Thompson at Kansas State was injured and he couldn't run all that much. Will Howard was the rushing quarterback who couldn't throw all that well. You're not going to get him injured if you have to run him 20 times in one game. That may suck. He may have to go to the ice bath, but I don't think he would get injured if you do that. I mean, he is a tough, tough kid. Use his skill set, put him in a position to win, and if combined with good schematics, he plays as A-plus game, 
he could care he could carry this team to a win. And if the team is doing what they should be doing on top of Will Howard playing to his ceiling, Ohio State could win in dominant fashion. The key to winning this game is quarterback Will Howard and how he plays, how he handles the environment, and how the staff schemes up schemes things for him. He handled Autzen Stadium fairly well, not perfectly. He had some moments where he was rattled, but he handled it well. He's been a good quarterback this season, and I'm excited to see what he does against Penn State. I think he is the number one reason why Ohio State can beat the Penn State Nittany Lions. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment your thoughts down below. Thanks to Crash2488, Brasco Rascal, and Carlito OH for being Heisman members. Thanks to Chris Lane, Ismar, Tyler Nye for being All-American members. And thanks to John Lynn, Roaming No, Matthew Sale, Austin Christmas, Joshua Jorgensen, Will Loftus for being All-Conference members. Have a great day, everyone. Please check out my Patreon page, Merchandise Store, and Discord server via the link in the description or down below in the pinned comment. Go Nittany Lions, and go Buckeyes. I'll see you guys soon.